Well, Mike, I, I tend to bob around, so I'll try and stay still, but it is incredibly difficult to stay still in Manchester in this incredibly buzzy, lively and wonderful city when we are talking also about the extraordinary work of the Tudor Trust. And I'm wearing my Tudor Trust blue jacket here uh, in, um, sort of in recognition of being part of this amazing family and everybody in the room is part of this extraordinary movement for social equality and a fair and level playing field. And I wrote out this long speech, and I've written loads of statistics about you know, blocks and GCSE um, pass rates and comparisons between advantaged and less advantaged. And I thought everybody in the room actually knows these statistics. We all know that social mobility in the United Kingdom is incredibly uneven. And those who earn the least and have the least face the biggest struggles of all. And frankly, I don't know about you, and I imagine as you're in the room, that makes you mad and it makes me mad too. And it's so great to be here together with you to start looking at ways that we as individuals can really make a difference. And um, uh, Abigail was incredibly generous in describing me. It makes me sound terribly grand, and I'm not really at all. I'm, I'm not grand. And one of the things why um, I decided and was delighted to be asked and really honoured and the, the privilege and the honour is all mine to become part of the Tudor Trust family is because I'm doing the things that I'm doing and I have my office in Buckingham Palace and I've got an MVO after my name and all of those amazing things because I had the help of a tutor to get me through at school when I was young because I was, and I don't know how many fellow sufferers there are in the room, I was hopeless at maths. I was one of those kids who just couldn't do it. I was one of the kids who, Isabel the tutor we met today in, uh, in Butterstar Primary School, I was one of the kids who would come and sit, arms folded, I can't do it. And through having the benefit of having a tutor, and my family were in a position where they could enable me to have that, I was able to crack that problem, and I was able to move on and up, and madly at some point I was asked to be responsible for a budget of £35 million. I didn't tell my chairman that I never actually got my O-level maths, but it's so far, it's working, it's OK. But, so I had that, that privilege, but too many of our children, our great, talented, funny, curious, extraordinary, wonderful children just don't have that chance. And that's why it's so important that the Tutor Trust it's growing in Manchester, it's growing in Leeds, it may be growing in Liverpool, it may be, uh, may be not so welcome, I'm not quite sure, but it's, it's going to be going everywhere because the cause and the issue is now and it's important and it's easy to get involved. And what was really charming and wonderful about Abigail's speech is she kind of listed off all of those achievements, the awards and the kind of slipped it into conversation, randomised control trial and all of these kind of things. And I just want to spend a few moments talking about, if I may, talking about the personality that is the Tutor Trust, the big, bold words, the Tutor Trust. These are extraordinary people, and I know that they're extraordinary because I come across all kinds of charities working with young people all the time, and I know a lot of other people who do. And those who I meet and those who I talk to, when we mention Tutor Trust and it comes up in conversation, suddenly the energy in the room changes because this is an extraordinary group of people. Um, and just reflecting on Nick and Abigail five years ago setting this up, a lot of people at the time would have thought they're crazy. It's impossible. It's too big a problem. You're never going to make it. You're going to crash and burn. It's going to be a disaster. Um, this isn't going to happen. But you know what? They stood, they stood up, they stepped forward, they formed it, and they're growing it and it's been growing ever since that time. And this is really good work, but you see, the great thing about the Tutor Trust, and this is where the personality thing comes in, they're not interested in good work. No, good work isn't what the Tutor Trust is about, and that might sound strange, but they're not interested in good work because they're interested in great work. Because the children that they're working with all the time need not good, not okay, they don't want a C, they want to get an A, they want the best. This is what the Tutor Trust represents. And Abigail mentioned this thing called randomised control trial. Um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with these things, but charities are being encouraged to prove their impact. 
and so many of them that I come across in the work that I do, tend to treat this a little bit like going into the Hall of Mirrors at the end of the pier. They'll have sort of slightly dodgy lenses that they look through to see themselves in a slightly different light. And they'll um, have sort of um, just pass around questionnaires and self-evaluate and then look at the end product and say, aren't we wonderful? Um, Nick and Abigail could have done that. They could have done that, but that's not what they're about. Tutor Trust decided to stand in front of an evaluation mirror that was the clearest and sharpest focus you can get under the harshest possible lighting. I don't know about how many um, ladies in the audience know the sort of mirrors that I'm referring to in department stores. You know, there are some where the light's nice and gentle and soft and, you know, it's kind of hazy. You don't necessarily see all of your blemishes and in my case, there are a lot age 50. Um, th this is a mirror that has the sharpest and uh, harshest overhead lighting. Every possible blemish is going to show up on this trial. And these two people could have dodged it, but they decided it absolutely is vital that what we're doing is the best that it can possibly be. A randomised control trial, I cannot, under, I cannot undersell this, it is an incredibly difficult thing to pull off. Hugely, hugely difficult. Um, and they've done it and it's running in over 100 schools, and the results will be definitive as to the success of this. There is a huge building body of evidence anecdotally about the success of this and other impact measures. This will tell the story, and people are going to get behind this, and Tutor Trust is going to be one of the most extraordinary charities in the UK. Um, now, you would think that setting up this enormous juggernaut of a randomised control trial would be enough and that Nick and Abigail would say, whew, right, we're just going to run a steady state, we'll do some fundraising, we'll just kind of keep it easy, let the trial kind of bed in, and we're going to take it easy. Mm -mm. This is tutor trust. This is about fairness for children. Nick and Abigail and all of the tutors, we either go large or we go home. So tutor trust, as Abigail said, and as was pointed out, raised over a million pounds in the last 12 months. That's going some. That really is going some. Tutor Trust also decided to look at its governance structure, look at the structure of the management team, focused on different roles, introduced a new quality management system, and introduced new trustees onto the board. That is a phenomenal amount of work in the course of the last year, and I'm delighted they got an award to recognise it and young children and young people in Manchester, Leeds and the growing network are going to be reaping the benefits of that for a long time to come. And today I was out, as I mentioned earlier on, at a school seeing a tutor in action. And this is where the whole point of this glorious thing comes to life. Because Isabel was sitting with three children, a very early session in her relationship with them. And these three children came into the room a little bit nervously because they saw um, Abigail and me and we're quite scary people standing in the room uh, talking and they kind of inched in and Isabel just shot into life, rushed over, swept them up and sat them down at this wonderful little table, you know, with the tiny little chairs. And they all sat round. And the little boy in the room was, we heard later on, somebody who didn't really like to do after-school things, wasn't really engaging, wasn't really confident socially and there was concerns about how he was going to switch on to this tutoring session. This was tutoring session two. And he was, we saw something going on and he was passing a little sort of twist of paper to Isabel. And she said, that's, that's really lovely, I'll, I'll eat that later. And it was a tiny little gingerbread man that this little boy had made specially for Isabel. And this was his second session. And that was really quite an extraordinary moment of confidence and trust and excitement. He wanted to give her something special. Tutoring check session number two. This is important. And then they were playing a maths game and I was kind of following, thinking, yeah, I can add that up. Yeah, this is good. Then they got a slight more complicated stuff, so I withdrew and didn't put my hand up. <laughs> Still got to be careful even at this time. And there was one moment that is the joy of Tutor Trust, that is the point of Tutor Trust, and we were there and we had the privilege to see it. A little girl sitting opposite Isabel got a question right, and she jumped with excitement in her chair, because she suddenly 
understood something that she'd been ramming up against and not getting and not getting and suddenly she was getting it and in that moment in that tutoring moment is the heart and essence and joy of this because for that child suddenly maths isn't a monster it's massive life isn't difficult it's possible i can't do it i can't do it goes to yes i can and the whole world becomes open and rich with possibilities this is the passion and the results that drive the tutor trust family and why i am unbelievably delighted to be a part of it listening to the other names of the people who are patrons i'm thinking what am i doing i feel so phony being on this list but it's just so wonderful to be a part of it so individuals can make a difference Nick and Abigail stood up and said, we're going to do something about this and brought to life the only organisation in the country that does this extraordinary thing. They're being joined by hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of young people who want to be a part of it. We heard that the bar is very high to ensure the very best people are working with our children. And this is the message that we can make a difference, that individuals can stand together and crack this social mobility thing. Nick and Abigail went into the randomised control trial. We can go forward with, with um, Tutor Trust with enormous confidence and great joy because together we can level the playing field. And Team Tutor Trust, that little girl today jumping in her seat shows we are changing the world. Thank you. Nicola, thank you so much for those uh, generous, stimulating uh, words. You have shown emphatically why uh, Abigail and I and our trustees were so keen to have you as a, a patron of Tutor Trust. So we're absolutely delighted to, to have you on board. Uh, thank you for... Uh, saying, uh, just uh, sharing very personally why the mission of Tutor Trust really matters to, to you. Thank you for emphasising how keen we are to, to make sure every single hour of tuition we deliver is the best it possibly can be, because the kids we work with deserve the absolute best, and we really are committed to getting better and better at our, at our